In this video, we'll introduce a generalization of list decoding called list recovery. So here's the definition of list recovery. Let's choose parameters capital L and little l, so that capital L is larger than little l and that both are integers greater than or equal to 1. And let's choose a parameter p between 0 and 1. We see that a code c over an alphabet sigma of length n is p comma little l comma big L list recoverable if for all sets s1 up to sn, which are subsets of sigma, of size at most little l, there are at most capital L code words C that disagree with the lists in at most a p fraction of the places. That is, so that the number of i's, so that the ith symbol of C is not in the ith list, is at most p times n. To parse this, let's see a picture. So imagine that this is a code word, C, in our code C. We don't know what it is, all we know is that it's in the code. However, what we do know is some information about where each of the symbols live. Like we know that the first symbol here, C1, is in some list, S1. Let's say it's either A or B or C. And let's say we know that the second symbol, C2, is either, I don't know, B or D or F and so on. And we have a constraint like this for every single symbol all the way up to C sub n is either x or a or r or something like that. Now it is our job to find all of the code words in this code that satisfy these constraints or at least satisfy them for at least a 1 minus p fraction of the symbols. And we say that a code is p comma little l comma big L list recoverable if there are no more than big L such code words. Let's make a few observations about this definition. In order to have space, I'm going to erase the picture. So observations. The first observation is that list recovery generalizes list decodability. In particular, p comma 1 comma l list recovery is the same as p comma l list decodability. If this isn't immediately clear, pause the video now and stare at it until it is. The second observation is that, unlike for list decodability, list recovery is actually interesting when p is equal to 0. In that case, we're asking for the number of code words that agree with all of the lists to be no more than capital L. This is a pretty common case of list recovery, and in this case we just drop the P and say that it's little l, big L list recoverable. The third observation is that we're always going to have big L greater than or equal to little l, even if we didn't stipulate it in the definition. Pause the video now and think about why this is true. Okay, so here's the reason. I claim that for any code, I can come up with lists S1 up through Sn of size little l, so that there are little l code words that go through those lists. Indeed, consider the list that I get in the following way. Take any little l code words, let's call them c1 through c little l. Let's say they look like this. So they have length n. And then let's form the ith list by looking at all of the symbols in the ith position of these little l code words. So if this is position i here, I'm going to look at all of these symbols that show up there and turn that into my list. It has size no larger than little l, and if I do this for all the positions i, then clearly each one of these little l code words agrees with all of them. So therefore, we can't hope to have a definition like this unless capital L is at least little l. Now that we've seen this definition of list recovery and seen that it generalizes list decoding, 
It's a very natural question to ask if the results that we've seen for list decoding also generalize to list recovery. For example, is there a list recovery capacity theorem? Is there a Johnson bound for list recovery? The answer to both those questions is yes. I'm not going to work these things out in these videos, but as a fun exercise, you can work out what the list recovery capacity theorem should be by copying the proof of the list decoding capacity theorem. Another result that we saw for list decoding that you might wonder if it extends to list recovery is the list decodability of Reed-Solomon codes, and in particular the Gurusami sudan algorithm. The answer to that is yes as well, and we will see that in the next video.